Well, you made it. We made it to the final video. And this video is a accumulation of all of our rules videos. Now, what a rules video is and will be is a video that we communicate the traditions of Hume Lake. Before a video, we would just use it verbally. We would just stand up and say, these are the three M's in winter, or these are the four M's in uh, summer. And those, those M's are meals, meetings, and messing around. And then in the summer, it's modesty. But we just decided, hey, here's a creative way. We'll take video, and then they're seeing it as well as hearing it. And maybe it'll stick better. And also kind of controls our time. We don't get on tangents and just start talking about all kinds of things and just keep rambling and rambling and going on and not really saying anything but just keep talking over and over and over and over again and never really okay I'm rambling anyways let's watch a video and you'll see what I mean here's our first ones 92 and 93 all right You mean the rules. Paintings, they're pretty cool. Yeah, he gotta eat. What? What's that mean? I didn't get it. Could you show him again? Yeah, I got it the first time. I just wanted to hear the tunes. Hey baby, wanna go out? Come here, 
cutie. Hey, come here. People, thank you for listening. God bless all of you. Have a pleasant weekend. Well, you made it through the start of our rules videos. Those are our first original two rules videos. Uh, in the process of seeing, well, hey, it kind of works. It works to use or describe the rules on video. We decided, well, what if we took other things that we talk about rules? And the one main other thing we do and talk about rules is in broom hockey. And so it kind of opened a new door for that. Who you're going to see hosting our very first broom hockey rules video is a guy by the name of P.K. Kurth who is really the true legend of broom hockey. This guy was amazing. And we actually ended up naming a cup after him called the Kurth Cup for broom hockey champions. Kind of fun. So you'll see him in the first two. And then you'll also see a video with a guest appearance from Jeff Lilly. Jeff Lilly is our executive director, but at the time he wasn't our executive director. And so sit back. It's kind of fun to watch him in action playing out the lawyer. So here's a few more rules videos for you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's Hume Lake Winter Camp Broom Hockey Tournament. In just a few minutes, I'll be reading off today's schedule, letting you know who plays who and when. But first, there's a couple of important rules we need to cover with regard to the Broom Hockey Tournament itself. First rule we need to deal with is the protective equipment that you will be wearing in today's games. You will notice with me that we have the coveted Cooper Street Hockey Full Shin and Knee Protective Pad. Simply take the elastic strap, bring it around the back side of your leg, fasten it to the silver rivet. Repeat that process a second time, and one more time down at the ankle for full leg coverage. The next important piece of equipment that you'll be wearing, fashion has returned, ladies and gentlemen. It is the broom hockey helmet. Right here, take that helmet, place it at eyebrow level, set it down on your head, nice and firm. Take the chin strap, make sure it is buckled at the earpiece like such and that the chin fits snugly to keep the helmet in place. Are you ready to play with just a little bit of attitude and goalies for you? We've got lots of attitude. Full face protection to keep that face full and to keep those teeth where they belong inside your mouth. Now as you enter and exit the ice you will do so right here at this gate. Notice the rug located conveniently at my feet. And that is suitable for wiping those feet off. Remember, Mom, how she tells you to keep your feet clean before you come in the house? Hey, we ask the same thing for the ice. Helps it later on during the ice skating sessions. No mud, please. Also, footwear is essential. Traction, being able to get here and there on the ice. We ask that you have no cleats, no blades, no nails, no sandpaper, no rubber bands, no spikes of any type on your shoes. Just regular, plain old American Jim Dandy tennis shoes will do fine. Or if you got the big boots, big boots work great. No modified shoes, however, on the ice. 
As you enter the ice, gentlemen, you'll be making your way down to the far side of the ice rink on the other side, located underneath the scoreboard next to the Zamboni. That is where your games will be played and your brooms will be located. Do not pick up any brooms on your way. Ladies, you'll play here at the snack shop end, which is the near side of the court. All of your brooms will be located in front of your goals. As you pick up your brooms, you'll notice that there will be a string at the end of each broom. Simply slip your hand through that string and spin it shut. That will ensure that the broom stays where it's supposed to, on your arm, not in somebody else's face. Next thing we need to talk about deals with goalkeepers and goals. Each game is four minutes long. It will start with a face-off at center ice. In order for a goal to score, it must cross the red line completely. Any puck that is stopped on the line by the goalkeeper will not be a score. Goalkeepers must remain on their knees and within one body's length of the goal line at all times. Anytime they move out away more than one body length, they become a regular player and may not use their hands and feet. That's right, that's correct. Goalkeepers may stop the puck with their hands and feet. Once they do, everyone must back out and allow that goalkeeper to put the puck back into play. Now, each game will start with a face-off at center ice. Games are four minutes long and it is a running clock, which means if the puck goes out of bounds, simply look to an official and they'll put it back into play. The clock will not stop. If someone happens to be injured during the course of play, please be reminded, the clock will not stop. We'll very simply move you off to another end of the field of play and keep going. Ladies and gentlemen, please do not use injured people as human shields, okay? Tacky, very tacky. And finally, in the event of penalty shots, the game will not stop, so please be sure to line up as quickly as possible and adhere to all officials' comments and requests. That will make the game go smoothly and quickly and ensure as much playing time as possible. When exiting the ice after your game has been completed, please return your equipment to the barrels located on the other side of the wall at the snack shop end, and please wait for all oncoming players to enter the ice before you try and exit. That keeps the bottleneck and the flow of traffic moving smoothly once again. In the event that a game should end in a tie, we will incur what we call a sudden death. Each of the cones will be widened, making for a longer goal, and the first score wins the game at that point. It is sudden death, and it will start with a face-off. Check with the officials. They'll let you know what takes place and when. The only other thing you need to worry about as you play broom hockey today are penalties, and there are three. We try and keep it as simple as possible. The first penalty, which you may incur, is for intentionally altering the course of the puck. If during play you see the puck coming near you and you decide that it's time to aerobicize, step out with your foot and intentionally block it, that's a big no-no. And that results in a penalty shot for the other team. Second penalty that we award is for what we call intentionally high-sticking. That occurs when a player takes a broom and swings it above his waist, either on the backswing or on the follow-through, in such a manner as to threaten someone else's face. Nasty proposition. Penalty shot will be awarded for the other team. Our final penalty is for what we call excessive violence or intentional violence. If during the course of the play an official determines that you are more interested in slamming someone's body through this wall and into the snack shop than you are in going after the puck, that, ladies and gentlemen, is a penalty shot. Now, don't be whiners, please understand what I'm saying. Intentional violence is different than physical contact. If during the course of play an opponent gets in your way while you happen to be making a move for the puck, by all means, take them out. That is part of the game. That's why we call it broom hockey. However, if you're more interested in hurting your opponent than you are in going after the puck, that will not be tolerated. All of these calls are judgment calls by the officials and are left solely to their judgment. That's why they're called judgment calls. A penalty shot works the same way a free throw shot in basketball does. One man lines up to take a shot, goalkeeper is on the goal, everyone else lines up on the sides of the goals and cannot touch the puck until A, it has been deflected by the goalkeeper, or B, the puck stops dead should it fall short of the goal line. At that point, all play resumes and it's anybody's game. Remember the clock does not stop. Penalties, injuries, and pucks that go out of bounds are not worthy of stopping the clock. Now, it is extremely important during the course of play, if your knee pad should become unattached, take the time to rebuckle them. It is extremely important to do that. The knee pads will only protect you if they are properly fastened. Should they come undone, you must pause and a referee will tell you to do that. Better to take a few seconds out of the game than to spend a few hours in the infirmary. 
And one more thing. Please, don't sit on the wall. Need I say any more? Ready for this broom hockey tournament to finally begin? Are you psyched? Are you pumped? I can't hear you a little louder. Louder! Come on, you guys, get a clue. This is a videotape. I can't hear a word you're saying. Think about it, would ya? And while you're thinking, let me give you some of the rules and regs for how we play broom hockey here at Hume Lake. First of all, in just a couple of minutes, I'm going to tell you how the tournament stacks up and who plays who. But before we do that, let me walk you through, for those of you who are new, freshmen, rehabilitated seniors. I don't know. You've never been here before. This is the way it goes. All of our games are going to take place down at the yard. Guys, you're going to play your games at the far end of the ice rink underneath the scoreboard. And ladies, you're going to play down at the snack shop end, which is the near end of the ice rink. You kind of got that figured out. Our games are gender specific here at Hume Lake. Guys will play in a guys tournament. Ladies will play in a ladies tournament. And you got the gender specific. That's politically correct because we don't want to talk about sex in public. That's just not a good thing to do. So we have gender specific games here. And the games are four minutes long. It is a clock that does not stop. Once it starts, it goes all the way down to the end. There's no timeouts for goals scored. If a goal is scored, go right back to the middle. If an official makes a call you don't agree with, hey, don't bother arguing because the clock does not stop. If the puck goes out of bounds, look for the official. They're going to bring it right back in. And finally, if you get hurt, the clock doesn't stop. So be politically correct in this 1994 political year. Boycott injuries. Just say no to pain at the broom hockey tournament. Now, once the game gets underway, there's a face-off at center ice. In order to score a goal, you got to knock it between the cones. Got that one, didn't you? And under the height of the cones, little technical there, and it's got to cross the little red line all the way past the goalie box. Now, once you score, again, as I said earlier, return back to center ice for the faceoff because the clock does not stop for any occasion. Goalkeepers, 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 the few, the proud, the brainless. You're right there putting your face right in front of the puck saying, come on, give me your best shot, will ya? But I want to tell you, you, if you are a goalkeeper, can use your hands and feet to block the puck anytime you want. Just make sure you stay inside that blue goalie box. Anytime you're outside that goalie box, you become a regular player. Hands and feet are not allowed. That will result in a penalty shot. So remember, only in the goalie box can goalies use their hands and feet. And by the way, those of you that plan that defensive strategy to stack all your players in front of the goal, stay out of the stinking goalie box until the puck comes in and crosses that blue line. Otherwise, it's a penalty shot for the other team. Onward and upward we go. Now you heard me talking about penalties just a few seconds ago. Let me explain to you what those penalties are. Those are for violations and infractions of the rules. First penalty that we will call out on the ice is what we call intentionally high sticking. That's when you take this Jim Dandy little broom here and when you swing that broom you bring it back way up here and you follow through way up there and you're kind of trying to stick these bristles up your opponent's nose. Nasty proposition. When you swing, just like the song says, swing low. Keep that wrist down to the ground. If the, puck, if the broom comes up too high, penalty shot for the other team. We will warn you, if you don't get a clue, if you don't get a grip, you will get a penalty shot called against you. While we're speaking of the brooms, make sure that you put your wrist right inside this little tether there, spin it shut so it stays nice and snug, gives you that maximum power. Penalty number two is what we call intentionally altering the course of the puck. Now this penalty occurs when you decide that you're going to aerobicize, you're going to stretch out there in front of the puck and block it with your feet. You're going to do the old, oh, I just happen to be standing here with my feet at 90 degree angles so I can stop the puck routine. Doesn't work. If you are intentionally stopping the puck with your feet, or if you decide to reach out and grab that puck with your hands and you're not the goalie, that's a free shot for the other team. Penalty shots will be called. Penalty number three is what we call intentional violence. That's right, you heard it right here, intentional 
violence. Now, just quit your crying. I didn't say anything about physical contact. I said intentional violence. We will call a penalty not if you touch someone else. That's part of the game. We will call a penalty if we determine that you are more interested in damaging your opponent than you are in getting that puck across the line. Now, physical contact is a part of the game. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. If you can't stand the pain, get off the ice. I will tell you, bodies will fly, bodies will crash. But if we determine that you are more interested in just ugh, racking your opponent, just smashing him down, that's a penalty shot, pal. You'll probably get ejected from the game. Keep your eye on the puck. Keep your eye off the person. Play the game. Let me tell you what they are again. First of all, no high sticking. Second of all, no intentional altering the course with your of the puck with your hands or feet. And third, no intentional violence. You got him? If indeed a penalty is called, a penalty shot will occur. Let me tell you how this is going to work. You guys are going to line up. The official is going to ask you to line up on the outside of the cones just like you do in a free throw situation in basketball. You know where they all stand by the lines in the paint? Right there. That's where you're going to be. You're going to be waiting for that face off to take place. It's one man against one goalie. Referee's going to blow the whistle. Guy hits the puck, slams it home. Don't touch that puck until the goalie deflects it. Or <laughs> the guy's got spaghetti arms and it stops short of the goal. Then it's anybody's puck. But if you jump on it early, doesn't work, doesn't cut it, official's going to have a problem with that. Make sure you wait until the goalie stops it or it falls short. Then it's live action once again. Now we're ready to play. Before you step out on that ice, though, you gotta have two things. Number one, you gotta have attitude. If you ain't got no attitude, stay off the ice. You need to be revved up, pumped up, psyched up, foaming at the mouth, ready to play this game. That's the only way it's any fun. And once you got your attitude ready, and psyched up, and tuned up, and happening, put on this protective gear right here, because we always play it safe. Now, what you have here is your Cooper. But wait, this year you'll be sporting the new and improved Cooper SG600 with flex rib design. Just take the clip and slip it in the slot. This patented system found only on the SG600. Batteries not included. Now, for those of you who are in the under 125 pound class and you help or happen to pick up gear that Gunga Din has picked up, all you need to do is take this little buckle, take the little tab, and voila! It is designed to shrink right down and fit your leg. See, massive calf. You're jealous, I know. Once you get all three things on, you're ready to play. Put on both knee pads, and then you pick up the helmet of badness. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the helmet of badness, and you'll notice it's got a full face mask. You know why? We decided that all of you look better with a full set of teeth. Yes, every one of you will have that coveted full face mask for full Goalie attitude 100% of the time. Now, to put this helmet on, I'm so excited, man. I just look at this thing and I'm ready to go. I'm ready to play. When you take this helmet on, gotta love that hat head, ladies. That's why we got you the cage. It's not for your teeth. It's because nobody will know who you are behind this helmet of badness. Simply take the chin strap located conveniently under your chin was the magic word. Bring it through the little ear loop right there. See that? and bring it right back down to the chin, and voila, you're in there. You're set, you're ready to go. No need to mess with the fancy side buckles back here, because you don't need it. You got the chin, one size fits all. Well, almost all. You'll notice this is a medium, because my brains are packed in nice and tight. For those of you with the melon head, look for the large, that's your size. We're ready to go. Now, for those of you hockey jocks that think you're going to show up on this ice with cleats and blades and, and spikes coming out of your shoes and sandpaper and rubber band, hey, we're on to those games. Nothing but straight shoes at this lake because we play the straight game of broom hockey. Pure power, pure talent. Now we're ready to play. <laughs>
right back after these messages. If you've been injured in a tricycle accident, we can help. At the law firm of London, Steinbeck and Faulkner, we specialize in tricycle accidents. We at Hume Lake are concerned with this nation's moral decline. So we have initiated an aggressive new program. Use a snowball, go to jail. It's not just a good idea, it's the rules. Sometimes it seems that every time you turn around, you're breaking a rule. There are too many no's out there, for example. Okay, you get the idea. When you walk into a bank, is there a sign on the door that says, just a friendly reminder, no robbing the bank? That would be ridiculous. It's senseless to list every rule that exists. So to make things easier for you, we now present Hume's top 12 rules. Did you get them? Tragically, every year, millions of Hume Lake campers go home without understanding the rules. If you have questions regarding any of the above rules, please contact a lead counselor. And remember... Use a snowball, go to jail. It's not just a good idea, it's the rules. Well, the winter videos are starting to work. We're starting to get where people are looking forward to even seeing how we're going to present the rules, you know, either traditions or broom hockey. And we decide, hey, maybe this will work for the summer. So in the summer of 96, we decide, well, let's go ahead and do a summer rules video and traditions. And, and I, ha I hate to say it, actually, but I'm in this video. And um, you'll see it. I look like some kind of rapper or hip. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to do. I don't know. It's kind of embarrassing. But anyway, we move on past that. You're also going to see PK again doing a traditions video for winter. And that one's where he just kind of talks about the history of rules. Pretty fun. And then you, the last one you'll get to see in this section is called Geekman's World. It's a takeoff of a TV show called Beekman's World. And um, this, is, this is as a viewer warning on it. This video you are about to see is long, okay? We, we, we went way too long. A guy by the name of Brian Downs, who's kind of our main video guy, he kind of is new on the scene, and this is his new first project. He takes ownership of it. He puts all kinds of time into it, but it just comes out way too long. After the first showing, we look out the crowd, and half of them's asleep, and we say, okay, I think we need to shorten it down. So anyways, we just had fun, and we made this great video, but it was way too long. Um, what we're going to show you is the actual uncut, 
unedited. Very few people have actually seen this video. Only one week at camp ever saw the video in its complete state. And so here you go. Here's Geekman's World and other tradition videos. Hope you stay awake. The world, it's, it's filled with injustice. Can't we all just get along? No, we can't. And we don't. There's a need for fairness and standards for right and wrong. But whose standards? Who's right? Who's wrong? Rules. But there's so many rules in life. It would be mind-boggling to list every rule that exists. That's why we're here to help, not to just get along. We have four simple guidelines to follow. The four M's. Four M's. Important rules. Be at all meetings. Be at all meetings. Gotta be there. Be at all meals. Be at all meals. You gotta eat. Don't play with your food. Be modest. Modesty. Fashion without flesh. Under. Wear. Keep it under. Grandma wouldn't wear that. Don't be messing around. Don't be messing around. Stuff like no drugs, no alcohol, no smoking, no fireworks, firearms, no weapons of any kind. Those are against the law. No guys in the girls' cabin area. No girls in the guys' cabin area. Basically, just stay out of any cabin that's not yours. No wrestling or horseplay. You might get hurt. No radios, no TVs, no hi-fi stereos, no entertainment centers, movie projectors, no squirt guns. And don't walk in the road. So what do you think? You want to see him again? Lift off. Too bad, because here it goes. Be at all meetings. Be at all meals. Be modest. Don't be messing around. Stuff like no drugs, no alcohol, no smoking, no fireworks, firearms, no weapons of any kind. No guys in the girls' cabin area. No girls in the guys' cabin area. Basically, just stay out of any cabin that's not yours. No wrestling or horseplay. You might get hurt. No radios, no TVs, no hi-fi stereos, no entertainment centers, movie projectors, no squirt guns. And don't walk in the road. When life gets chaotic, there's a need for rules. Yeah, Hume rules. Because Hume rules. Yeah. Good morning, boys and girls. In the beginning, there were rules. Thou shalt not eat the fruit of this tree. From all the trees of the garden you may eat, but of this one tree you may not eat, for you shall surely die. Things are simpler than one man, one woman, one rule. Now that there are more women, it follows that there would be more rules. The previous views and opinions are not necessarily those of Humlet Christian Camps, its management, or its staff. As time passes, Moses decides to go mountain climbing. And on his way back, he finds two stone tablets. And on those tablets are written 10 new rules. He called them commandments, but we know what he meant. The previous views and opinions are not necessarily those of Moses, Aaron, or anyone else for that matter. Time passes on again. We come to the Greeks and the Romans, and they had so many rules, they had to invent philosophers to figure out exactly what they were trying to say. They had kings who every time they opened their mouth, it would become a rule. Walter, the king would say, take out the trash. So let it be written, so let it be done. All men named Walter should take out the trash. But they didn't call them rules, they called them royal edicts. You know what they meant. Now we're into the 20th century, and we've got so many regulations that we've invented lawyers. Only we don't call them regulations, we call them laws. But we know what we mean. Here at Hume Lake, we're going to roll back the clock to the days of Moses. You don't need 5,000 regulations. You don't need a list of royal edicts. You don't need ideas to think about. Very simply, we have 10, count them with me, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 traditions. We call them traditions, but you know what we mean.
Although it is implied that you need to follow only the 10 rules listed, there are other laws that may apply to you and your local region. By watching this video, you hereby acknowledge that you agree with and promise to obey, abide, keep or do in whole or part every rule, regulation, law, tradition, suggestion, edict, royal or otherwise, and all stern looks from your mother. And also the writing on mattress text, whether written, spoken, implied or otherwise, whether clearly stated, posted, discussed, or even thought about. <laughs> for crying out loud, take responsibility for your own actions. Be a man. Be a woman. If you have any questions, see a lead counselor. Do you realize that if there was a lawyer present in the garden, God would have been sued for negligence? It's true, because you see, he should have put a fence around the tree and then posted it clearly with warning signs. And Adam, he would have been arrested for indecent exposure. Eve would have been arrested for petty theft and destruction of private property. And the serpent would have been declared an endangered species. Pop quiz! What are the top 10 rules? Fill in the blanks. Have you ever wondered why lawyers practice law and doctors practice medicine? When are they going to get it right and do it for real? We now return to our regularly scheduled program. Fact! If you were to take the entire ice rink and turn it into itsy bitsy ice cubes, you would have one million 227,480 ice cubes. That's one huge snow cone. I'm Geekman, and you've just entered Geekman's World. hockey game must be played with adult supervision and all safety precautions must be taken. Follow all rules exactly and no substitutions are allowed. Hey, isn't it swell? You have brought yourself to Hume Lake and we have brought broom hockey to you. Broom hockey! What a great invention! Hmm, I wonder who thought of that. Jada Bing, what a great question. Questions, you can't have answers without questions. And that's what we do here on Geekman's World. We take questions that you have about broom hockey and find you answers. In words you understand, in ways that are fun, and funny, too. <laughs> what you are about to see is the study of E-Rock's three laws of broom hockey here on Geekman's World. Hello, my little pencil necks. Today's studies will cover gravity, physics, and geometry. We'll use broom hockey as our example. Hey, Geekman, are you sure we're not studying astronomy? No, Pester, why do you ask? Because the last time I played broom hockey, I saw stars! There are three laws that govern the ice. We refer to them as e -Rock's Three Laws of Broom Hockey. Did you know the ladies will play underneath the scoreboard where the gentlemen will be closest to the snack shop? So, oh Geekmeister? Yes, my funny but fuzzy friend. So, then where would I play? 
Great question. Thank you. Law number one, no intentional high sticking. High stick. <laughs> To help us better understand this law, we will use our intentional high sticking omatic. Tester? Yeah, boss. I'll need your assistance. Certainly, boss. Stand omatics, please. You notice, as the stick swings low, we are fine. But if I intentionally Whoa. swing it high, ouch. Ouch. Did you know that the games will begin with a face-off? Ooh, and speaking of which, that's one we need to take off. Then the clock will run for four minutes, non-stop. It will not stop for anything. Say, Professor of Geekness, yes? how about this? What happens if my team should happen to get a goal and we would stop to celebrate? It don't matter, it still doesn't stop. Okay, how about this? What happens if I fall down and hurt myself? Not uncommon, but it still won't stop. Okay, okay, Professor of Though Who Knows All That Is Geek. What happens if that umpire makes a bad call and I want to argue with him? That will never happen and still the clock won't stop. Okay, okay, what about it? What about hey, it? Hey, 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 it just won't stop. Law number two. No intentionally altering the course of the puck with a foot or a hand. Size 15, extra large. To help us understand the difference between intentional and not intentional, I'll need Pester once again. Here I am, Geekman. Pester, if you could please stand on the X, but before you go, you might want to put these on. Oh, I'm not so sure about this one. And for this experiment, we'll need a broom and some pucks. It hit his hand, but it wasn't intentional. It hit his foot. Nope, it wasn't intentional. And now the difference. Now, Pester, give me that puck. Notice here, Pester the puck. My hand, oh, my foot, what? Now that's intentional. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't freak out. If you are a goalie, you may use your hands or your feet to stop the puck as long as you're inside that goalie box. But remember, you cannot enter the opposite team's goalie box unless the puck enters first. Did you know that there is enough Freon underneath the ice to supply 6,342 cars with Freon? Say, Geekhead, do we have to pay for this stuff? Of course. Then why do they call it Freon? Law number three, no intentional violence. Now this does not mean that there will be no physical contact. Because we cannot forget Newton's third law of physics. Or his fig cookies. It is any body set into motion will remain in motion until it meets an object of equal or greater size. Like PK. <laughs> that is the... Oh, oh, Now that was definitely intentional. Definitely.
Did you know that in case of a tie, we will... You mean one like this? I don't think so. We'll go into what's called sudden death overtime. The goals are widened, and then the first team to make a goal... Whoa. Hey, Geekman, look at this. We got us a letter. It's from Willie Make It in West Pigeon Drop, Illinois. Hi, Willie. What happens, it says, if I break one of E-Rock's three laws of broom hockey? Now, that's a great question, Pester. It is a good question, but it's not from me. It's from Willie Make It in West Pigeon Drop. I told him this, but he doesn't listen to me. If one of these laws are broken, a whistle will sound. <laughs> and a penalty shot will be called. Now, on your penalty shot, the teams line up like they would in a free throw in basketball. Here's the goalie, and here are the two teams, and the person with the free shot, he sits here. Now, you can't leave your positions until either a goal is scored like that, whoa, back there, or the goalie, that's the guy missing the tooth, stops the penalty, oops, stops the puck from going through because he's a good goalie. Or, if this guy's kind of wimpy like me, he hits it here and it stops like this, like, you know what I mean? And then, of course, everybody runs out and they're hitting it and throwing it around and shooting on the thing and all going crazy. It's so much fun. Fact, to score a goal, you must have the puck travel between the cones, meanwhile, staying underneath the height of the cones. In other words, height plus distance equals goal. Say, oh, beak face, I yes. got another letter here from a Mr. Paul Weston at Hume, California. He says, what happens if my puck stops right on the line? Great question. For this, let's go online to our Geekoscope to find out. Notice, it is not a score until the puck completely crosses the line. Warning, warning, warning. Quick, get a pizza! In order to play broom hockey, you will need a broom, shin guards, and a helmet. First, let's talk about shoes. Hold this for a second, would you? There will be no spikes, no cleats, no blades, no sandpaper, no rubber bands, or any foreign object you can think of putting on your shoes. Next, we have the shin guards. They're simple. You simply take the strap, insert it into the clip, and snug it down. The helmet. What an incredible piece of equipment. Protects the head, you know. Notice on the side here, there's this fancy strap. Don't mess with it. The one that is important is the chin strap. For this one, I think we'll need to get in a little closer. Take the strap, bring it around, flip it into the chin guard. And there you have it. Now all we need is a broom. No, Pester, not like that. Like this. Put your hand through the loop, spin the broom, and you're ready for action like this. <laughs> Did you know that underneath the ice, there is a thin layer of paper that would equal 3,810 rolls of toilet paper? Say, would that be one ply or two? Two. Would it be quilted or unquilted? Unquilted. Scented or unscented? It doesn't matter. Well, that about wraps it up for today. Like we say here on Geekman's World, bada bing, bada boom, bada bye bye. Class dismissed. Oh, cool. Reset. <laughs> uh -huh.
I warned you. I told you it was going to be long. That thing's still probably going. I don't know. That, that is the longest video, but we had fun. Um, our next section, we're going to get right in talking to it. Now, this next video, I'm actually not technically supposed to know about, or uh, you really aren't supposed to see it. And really, if you are a movie producer or work for some big production company, don't watch this part of the video. <laughs> but we had fun. It is a kick. And then you're also going to see uh, a video that just uses some sound effects. And then, and then finally, you'll end up with one that's kind of a takeoff of the Mighty Ducks, where you've got the big, mean staff broom hockey team taking on the little camper team and it's just a battle and people are the, the storyline twists and it turns and there's tension and there's drama and tears and laughter and okay it's not that good but anyways enjoy it's gonna be a fun little section all right ah salam and good evening to you worthy friend please please come closer <laughs> too close a little too close There are a few uh, provisos, a, a couple of quid pro quo. Because of our traditions, we've kept our balance for many, many years. Bueller. 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 Listen, kid, if you live with us, you have to eat like us. Sneak. Surprise. We have traditions for everything. How to sleep, how to eat, how to work, how to wear clothes. Look at the fish in his shoes. Girl, he must be a rock star. Not funny, Ed. <laughs> and because of our traditions, every one of us knows who he is and what God expects him to do. I don't understand. What don't you understand? Yes! One bite and all your dreams will come true. Oh. <coughs> what is it? It's a smoking jacket. Smoke? That's funny. Thank you. <laughs> Without our traditions, our lives would be as shaky as, as, as a fiddler on the roof. Any questions?
out before the police come. <laughs> Ketchup. Dude, you got any peanut butter for my meatloaf? Hey, can we have seconds on the liver? Welcome to the 1997 Hume Lake Winter Camp Room Hockey Tournament. Tonight, you will watch as two of the toughest teams meet head to head in this final event to determine who will claim this year's championship t-shirt. This definitely will be a battle of power, determination, and skill. And you can bet there will be plenty of heart pounding action throughout the match. Two teams may enter the ice, but only one will walk away the victor. This game is pure excitement. This game is pure adrenaline. This game is Broom Hockey. Well, it's come down to this, folks. Through a grueling process, we've ended up with two teams hungry for championship t-shirts. Incredible. Wearing the red helmets, we'll have the impressive Team Hume Lake. They are huge. And wearing the white helmets, we'll have the rather young Team Camper. Tonight's game is brought to you by Cooper, the maker of the SK2000, the only helmet that slips on and clips on. And by Cooper's SG600 shin guard. Simply clip, pull, and that's it. While the teams are finishing up their warm-ups, let's take a closer look at tonight's game. The game clock is a four minute running time. It does not stop no matter what. No cleats or modified shoes are allowed. Goalies, you must stay on your knees at all times and stay within the goalie box. In order to score, the puck must completely cross the line and stay beneath the height of the cone. There are also three basic rules to broom hockey. The first is there's no high sticking. Secondly, no intentionally altering the course of the puck with either the foot or the hand. And finally, definitely no intentional violence. Well guys, it looks like both teams are ready to start. Let's head down to the ice. Here we go, on the buzzer. Team New Lake takes control. They pass the center, slide to the outside. The forward sets, takes a shot. Oh, what a save! Goal slides it up the wall. Bringing it up the outside. Sends it across court. Drive up the center. 
dishes it to the forward. Hume knocks the puck away. Hume gains control, heading towards the goal. Looks like a one-man show. Score! Puck brought back to center ice. Gene Camper takes the face off, looking to set up their offense. They pass through the defenders. Gene Hume Lake is closing in. Look at that incredible steal! Hume Lake recovers the puck once again. Number 25 bouncing off the wall, using the defenders to his advantage. Hume Lake is looking unstoppable. Between the legs. He shoots. Score! Score! With 2.35 left in the game, and he wakes up by six points, the campers are going to have to put together some kind of offense to stay in this game. However, that captain still has to hold the puck. Immediately feed it into the center. They set the shot. Wind up. Score! They're calling a high sticking penalty. On a penalty shot, the two teams line up outside of the cone. Once the whistle blows, nobody moves until the goalie touches the puck or the puck stops short of the goal. There's the shot, and it's good. Run the camera and find themselves on the scoreboard front. Both teams back to the center ice. The white helmets have control of the puck. They're taking it to the wall. Moving through the obstacles, Team Hume breaks up the play. There's a loose puck at center ice. That should be a penalty. That was intentional. That makes two for Team Camp. If the penalties continue, this could be the downfall of Team Hume Lake. There's a foot. Score! Nice tennis swing, buddy. There's another penalty shot. There's another score. There's another penalty. Here's Camp for another one. With 30 seconds left in the game, the underdogs have found themselves within one point of tying the game. However, Hume Lake is running the game, looking to Clint another. There's a shot on goal. It's too high. No score. Play continues. With time running out, this could be the last opportunity for the campers to tie the game. Piercing the defense, they take it down the board. The puck's loose, knocked to the center. A swing, no good. You like wins one more time. Gentlemen, That's right. gentlemen, hold on. This game is not over. There is a penalty, and it's oh, intentional violence. Steve Hume looks furious. This penalty could, could draw an overtime. Not only that, but. Intentional violence means that Team Hume Lake may have one person ejected from the game and they would have to survive in a power play situation. Let's look at the instant replay. P.K. Kurth coming in, going for the man, oh, not that. the puck. Doesn't even Ouch. go for the puck. Great time. call by the refs. This means that Team Camper may be able to tie up the game with a penalty shot. The outcome of the game lies in one man's hand. What's going on in their mind? Will they be able to tie the game, or will they lose it all to the Red Helmet? It's over the line. What a shot by Team Camper. I can't believe it. He tied and there's pandemonium here on the ice. And with that tie, what that means is we're going into sudden death overtime. They widen the cones, and the first team to make a score wins. Let's get that action started right now. There's the whistle. Team Camper comes up with the puck. They push it up the middle, charging the goal. They find the open man. The Campers have a clear shot. This could be it. Penalty! With this penalty, Team Camper could take the game. Yeah, but I don't even know what the penalty was. Intentionally kicking the puck. Let's take a look. OK, OK, that was not intentional. Oh, that one was. He, he kicked oh. it. Once again, the outcome of the game comes down to a penalty shot. No score. He picks up the puck. He shoots. It's going. It's going. Nothing's stopping it. And it's a score. Hmm? 
Now on this next section, we woo, <laughs> uh, we went to the we went to some classics. You know, we went back in time and we looked at historical films to base how to do productions. And so the first one you're going to see is basically an old black and white silent film. We, we, we mocked that in one of our rules videos. And then we went to true, true artmanship and, and, and skill and camera angles and all that kind of stuff. We went to Kung Fu Theater <laughs> and uh, got our model from them. So here you go. You've got the old classic along with Kung Fu Theater. <laughs> some broom hockey. Yo. Well, you must know the rules first. Rule one, no kick puck. 
wanna fight me, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'll fight you, man. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> begins. Remember this. Very important. Don't mess around. Number one, no cleats or modified shoes allowed. If I see you wearing karate shoes, you will be kicked off the ice. Second, four minute running clock. Clock does not stop for anything. So if you think we're going to play five minutes, forget it. Only four minutes. Straight time. No stopping. I don't care if you get hurt. We're not stopping the clock. A goal is scored when the puck breaks the plane of the back side of the line and stays beneath the height of the cones. Okay. Listen very, very carefully. Look at the dolls. This is serious stuff. Now, if at any time during the game, there is a penalty, two teams line up outside of the cones. Got it? Ninja, quit talking. Look at me, but I'm talking to you. Good. Once the whistle blows, no one moves until the goalie touches the puck or the puck stops short of the goal. Then you move. Don't move before that. Notice. Bobby take a penalty shot to... Look. She no score on Tuma. He too good. Goalies, be on your knees at all times. I don't want to see you standing up. Waving to your girlfriends. Oh, you're me, man. You be on your knees and you watch that puck. Because if it scores on you, you're going to feel bad. After four minutes, if tie is scored, then prepare for sudden death overtime. Cones are widened. First team to score wins. Very, very good. Now, you are ready to go out and play broom hockey. What are we gonna call ourselves? We gotta get a name. <laughs> what about uh, chicks with dicks? Nah. Uh, how about chop suey? <laughs> no. Uh, how about uh, three kung fu masters and a loser? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that one. I think that last little section has a couple, of two of my favorite videos. But this, I have to admit, the the final video you're gonna see is way up there. It's it's really a classic, but the first one before that, we kind of let our lead staff take their hand at trying to come up with a rules video. And then you're going to see another Broom Hockey's rules video. This one, this Broom Hockey rules video goes deep into the history of the sport. 
it looks at the evolution of the game and where the rules came from originally and, and how the game was really formed from its early stages to the high-tech game that it is now. Anyways, we just had fun and, and goofing around, so you're going to also see the evolution of broom hockey. And then you're finished. You've made it through. You're all done. And uh, you can rewind it and torture your friends when they come over. Anyways, <laughs> hope you enjoy this section. Hello, and welcome to KHUME News Channel 9. I'm Casey Finley. And I'm Joe Nagy. Welcome. Tonight we have an exclusive story in the news, and we're going to break straight to the snack shop where we have a reporter standing by live. I'm standing here live in the snack shop with Jeff. Jeff, tell us what you've just experienced here. Well, I was sitting in the snack shop minding my own snack shop business, and the student suddenly appears, and he wants to order a shake. I think to myself, is this guy a camper missing a meal? So I figured I'd fix him up my snack shop surprise. This camper had to learn the hard way about missing meals. I'm Stacy Smith for KHUME News. Back to you, Joe. Also in tonight's news, three girls have been caught missing the evening meetings after an exhilarating day of Hume Lake recreation. They decided to stay back in their cabins for a little extra vanity time. Little did they know their antics in their cabins would lead to hours of gum scraping in the Ponderosa. Hume Lake staff encourages prompt attendance to all meetings. Tonight's special report features the announcement of a huge Sony theft ring and caution to all summer 99 Ponderosa campers. To decrease potential theft issues, please turn in any and all electronic devices to your friendly Hume Lake staff and your outstanding counselors. In Who's News tonight is Huntington Beach's professional surfer, Joe Kachka. Kachka, a native of Southern California, is Hume Lake's outstanding citizen. Hi, I'm Liz Friesen, and we're standing here at the boundary line on Dormitory Road, the official site of Joe Ketchka's glory. Joe, I noticed you carry your surfboard everywhere, and we live up here in the mountains. Can you please tell me about that? Dude, this thing like goes everywhere with me, but I just can't take it over that girl's territory or myself. It's just not keeping it real doing that. Yeah. That's good, Joe. We're proud of you. Congratulations on winning your award on staying out of the girls' cabin area. Our hidden camera special has revealed a hilarious mix-up. Hume Lake staff thought a drug bust was on hand, but found themselves faced with humiliation. With their best foot forward, high-tech security vehicles raced to the snack shop as the scene unfolded. Much to the dismay of the staff, they met a group of men and women from the diabetes camp up the road. The staff noticed their folly and apologized for the mistake. However, staff will continue the lookout for drugs, alcohol, or drinking. A consumer report shows that paintballing here at Hume Lake this summer is up. Why? Because Hume Lake is a strictly enforced, weapon-free environment, the introduction of the new paintballing course is a big hit with high school students. Our sports reporter Chuck Bomar is here with the latest in sports. Thanks, Casey. Yes, today we had an awesome day in sports. First, I want to take you out to a diving competition that happened here at Hume Lake. No, no, that is not okay. Judges are not fans of diving into the lake and are sticking by the no diving rule. Greg Luganis, you have nothing on Neil. Judges score, perfecto. Next, WWF has some hardcore wrestling. WCW, harder core wrestling. Hume Lake steps it up in a large way. Last night we had the chance to see Andy the Horse Whisperer, Hume's finest, square up against the heavyweight Horse Droppings. Stone Cold Steve Austin, you have nothing on Andy. Outside of Hume's version of the true art of wrestling, no imitations of this horseplay, wrestling, or wrestling with horses is to be allowed. That concludes our day in sports. Back to you, Casey. Thanks, Chuck. Hume's weather has been beautiful. And here with more is our very own weatherman, Cliff Carey. Boy, have things been swell up here. It's been hot, though. Here at Hume, our sunbathers have been soaking it up. High UV rays have caused some serious coverage of the skin. Hume appreciates and enforces this modest behavior due to their no two-piece swimsuit rule. Put on the sunscreen and enjoy the sun. I'm Cliff Carey for KHUME's Weather. Finally at Hume today was a major traffic backup. Campers gingerly cruised the streets and stopped cars for hours. Please stay out of the way of oncoming traffic. Thanks, Joe. 
Well, that's all we have for tonight. But before we go, let's take another quick look at tonight's top stories. Be it all meetings, be it all meals, dressed modestly, no wrestling or horseplay, no diving, no drugs, no alcohol, no smoking, no weapons, no electronic devices, no girls in guys' cabins, no guys in girls' cabins. And finally, remember to stay out of the way of traffic. Thanks for joining us in the news, and we will see you again tomorrow night. Good night. Good night. At the dawn of creation, there was no broom hockey, and man existed in his most primitive form. The invention of broom hockey was simply found by coincidence and presented astounding evidence that man would one day reach a more refined lifestyle. Soon after this discovery, Life changed dramatically for the pre Broomhawkimus man. This discovery was destined to enhance the lives of everyone that came in contact with it. As this phenomenon spread to global proportions, the event began to refine itself due to difficulties that arose. Therefore, the dawn of the rules era. In the beginning of this era, it was established there would no longer be any intentional violence. Hey you, go for the puck, not the man. Mm -hmm. It was also established that there would be no kicking the puck. Hey, pay attention. I said mm -hmm. no kicking the puck. Mm -hmm. Hey, don't use your hand. Huh? Use the brooms. <laughs> Soon the floods came. Then the Ice Age hit. No longer able to find dirt, the participants now look to the ice. The now modern game of broom hockey and its highly developed players consists of four minute rounds in which the clock never stops. Goals are scored by shooting the puck between and under the height of the cones. If a rule is broken, a penalty shot is called. The players line up on either side of the goal while the offended player shoots the puck. The puck is not in play, however, until the goalie gets it or it stops short of the goal.
Undecided games are also a thing of the past. Tie games will end in a sudden death over time. Cones are widened, and the first team to score wins. However glorious the game has become, there is one not so glorious element. That is the development of the no high sticking rule. No matter how advanced the game has become, don't forget to go out there and just play like an animal. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thanks so much for watching the Hume Legends series. We uh, had a blast making it, looking back over the footage. I hope you had a chuckle here and there. We just really want to point out, though, our primary goal and motivation for making these videos is to bring kids to Jesus Christ. We feel that they have a good time. We make the environment fun and enjoyable, that when they sit down and they hear the gospel message of Jesus Christ, that they'll be more open to listen to what he has to say. And so we just thank you again for supporting us and and, and being a part of this ministry. Keep your eyes out though because this isn't over. Every year from this point on we're going to be putting out a new video of the videos that we've done for that year. And so you can just keep on adding it to your collection of legend videos. Thanks again. Bye bye.